Hello there and welcome. I'm Bob Proctor. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life more than probably any other one thing. But I want you to really think as you watch this video, okay? It's not very long, but it is very powerful. And there's something in here that is not taught in school. The first thing I'm going to talk about that's not taught in school is thinking. I have a paper here that says thinking is a skill which can be learned just as we learn skills such as typing and playing the piano. Very few public schools offer courses expressly to teaching thinking. Rather, we are expected to learn and teach thinking as a byproduct of learning mathematics, reading, science, history, a trade, and so forth. And we do learn a lot about thinking in this way. The trouble is we learn our thinking skills in bits and pieces and we never put it together as an overall picture. If asked to describe what all is required in order to think effectively, most people would be at a loss to give a complete account. Thus, we are unable to assess our own thinking skills or systematically teach the skill of thinking to others. Now, I want you to think about your life. And I want you to think about your income. I want you to think about money. Money subject that is a subject that not a lot of people want to talk about. And when you do talk about it, a lot of people get defensive. They say, well, money's not everything. Well, that's sort of a ridiculous statement. Of course it's not everything. But money's important. It's very important in the area that it's used. It's as important as the food you eat, as the medical care that you subscribe to, as the car you drive, the home you live in, the vacations you take. See, money is something that uh, has nothing to replace it in the area that it's been used. Now, money is merely an idea. We uh, put stacks of stuff together. If we just look here, we put stacks of stuff together uh, that we call money. Now, I am going to run some pictures up here on the screen to help communicate my idea. I'm going to communicate graphically as well as verbally. And money is an interesting subject. You get stacks of it there. How would you love to have stacks of money? I think everybody would. Some people do, but very, very few. So let's talk about money. Now think about it. I frequently ask a person if they come to work with me, what's the most you've ever earned in a year? I really don't care what the answer is, but I want to know what the answer is. Because when they tell me the answer, what they're doing is telling me where their mind is programmed with respect to money. See, our mind is programmed. You're working with a program, I'm working with a program. Now, most people are working with a program that someone else built. They're, they are the production of somebody else's habitual way of thinking. I'm going to suggest that you can rewrite the program. You can rewrite the program. Now, before we get into the money too deep, back in 1970, Alvin Toffler wrote a book, Future Shock. And what he was doing was predicting what's going to happen in the future. And he looked ahead about 50 years. And he said, you know, um, the future is going to be a shock for most people. And he said, it's something that we should really think about. Now, in the book, he made predictions that um, everyone thought were absolutely crazy, but they weren't crazy. You see, these were predictions of what he said was going to happen over the next 50 years. Now, I was working with Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant in 1970 when this book came out, so the book was very popular in our, uh, in our company, and most of us thought, this guy's smoking something. This couldn't possibly happen. But stop and think of what's happening with your cell phone. I can type a message here, and I can send it anywhere in the world. And you'll see it simultaneously with me sending it. If you would have suggested that in 1970, people would have thought you were losing it. Well, he recently came out with something. He said, the illiterate of the 21st century are not going to be the people who cannot read and write. The illiterate of the 21st century are going to be the people who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. They're going to be the people who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. That's called changing your paradigm. And I want to share some information with you. If you've already got it, it's really good to hear it again. If you haven't got it, you're going to love it. Because it's about money. Okay? And it's really about how to create all you want. 
you have to have multiple sources of income. You can go back to the ancient Babylonians as far back in ancient history as you can go, and you're going to find that the wealthy people all had multiple sources of income. Now, I want you to think about these figures that you're looking at here. 3% of our population are earning 97% of all the money that's being earned. And everybody says that's unfair. Well, it's based on a law. That's really what it's based on. Our income is the harvest of our production. That's really what it is. But 3%. Now think of this for a moment. Some of those 3% are not very well educated insofar as we look at education. Some of them are functionally illiterate. They can neither read nor write. Now some of them are absolutely brilliant. But you're going to find people that are absolutely brilliant that fall into the 97% category that have to split up 3% of the money that's earned. So why and how does this happen? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. You see, you can become one of the 3%. Now, if somebody had told me that 55 years ago when I first got into the studying of this information, I would have thought they were dreaming. But my income went from 4000 to 175000 in a year. And it was based on the concept that I want to explain to you here. It's a very, very powerful idea. It really is. But what we have to understand is that the earning of money is something that doesn't happen by accident. You see, you can belong to this 3% group by creating multiple sources of income. Now, as I just said in a minute ago, wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources of income. This isn't an accident. It's by design. You can design this. So I'm going to ask you to really pay attention here. And you probably want to watch this video a number of times. There is an absolute law governs compensation. We know that there's a law. If I let this go, you know it's going to fall. If I let this go, it's going to fall. It's not going to go up. It has to go down. It has to go down. That is an absolute law. It's called the law of gravity. That's a law of the world. Well, the law of compensation is a law. And it's very exact. I want you to really pay attention to it because this law clearly states that the amount of money you earn is in direct ratio, it's in exact ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. So let's look at these three points one at a time. It's based on the need for what you do. You see, in my particular business, there's the opportunity to earn millions of dollars, and I have earned millions of dollars. Not because I'm smarter than the next guy, not because, um, you know, there's an emotional or capricious God said, I think we'll let Bob have a turn. And it's not because I'm lucky. It's because I find myself in a field where there's a tremendous need for what I do. I help people become aware of what they're capable of doing. I help people understand how they're programmed and how to shift that paradigm. That's essentially what I do. And there's a phenomenal need for that. We have people coming into our business every day. We train people to do this. But there's a tremendous need. I've worked in Shanghai, in Kosovo, in Bucharest, in uh, Buenos Aires, in Rio de Janeiro, in uh, Melbourne, Australia, in Singapore, all over Europe, all over South America, North America, everywhere I go, there's a need for what I do. When you find a tremendous need, and then you develop your ability to fill it, you've got to become very, very good at filling the need. Well, do you know, I fell in love with this business many years ago. Now, I was fortunate enough to work with a man who was the best at what he did, Earl Nightingale, uh, was a broadcaster. Lloyd Conant was a great executive. And I wanted Earl Nightingale to mentor me. What I didn't understand, when I came to work with them, I also got the benefit of Lloyd Conant. Two absolutely brilliant people. Now, I watched them. They were the best at what they did. And they started the industry that I'm a part of. Personal development, personal direction, that's really what it is. Well, you've got to make up your mind you're going to get really good at this. You're going to become very good at it. When you do, then you're very difficult to replace. Now, there's no such thing as an indispensable person. In fact, there was a great poem written on that one time about the indispensable man. It says, take a bucket of water and put your hand in up to the wrist. When you pull it up, the hole that remains 
is just how much you'll be missed. You can stir all you want as you enter. Stir up the water galore. But stop and you're going to find in no plan, no time. It's much the same as before. Well, what they were getting across is there's no such thing as an indispensable person. But some people are very difficult to replace. And if you make up your mind you're going to get really good at this, I guarantee you, you can earn a lot of money. So that's where income comes from. Find anyone who has really mastered what they're doing. They're going to earn an absolute fortune. See, this is the law of compensation. So this is what you want to study. What do you want to do? You just want to focus on your ability to improve. Become a master at whatever you're doing. You see? Now, this is the focus. The money is the reward. This is the cause. The money is the effect. You see, you take care of the cause, the effect will always take care of itself. Now, let's look at it this way. We're going to talk about multiple sources of income, not just one, but many. Now, I stumbled on this way back in the 60s. And when I stumbled on it, I thought, wow, this is really something. So you got the whole world in front of you there. You'll notice on the map, we got the whole world there, and you're sitting right in the center. You're placing yourself, now you could place yourself anywhere in the map, place yourself wherever you are, but I'm saying you're in the center of the world. The whole world's around you. Doesn't matter where you are, you're in the center of the world. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You could be in Mozambique, you're in the center of the world. You could be in Rio de Janeiro, you're in the center of the world. And there isn't much on your right as there is on your left. There's much behind as there is in front. So that's start where you are and you set up a source of income. Now MSI is an acronym for Multiple Sources of Income. MSI. Now, where you are is what you're earning right now. That's your present income. The MSI is an additional income. It's not another job. It's not a better job. It's not even a job. It's a source of income. See, money is reward received for service rendered. When I was sleeping last night, I was rendering service based on stuff that I did some time ago. Think of it this way. Think of a... Um, uh, uh, some kind of a rock star. Think of Elvis Presley. His estate is still earning money from records of his that are being played on the radio. That's right. He made recordings. And those recordings are being play played on the radio. And every time they're played, money goes into his estate. That's called a passive income. That's called a source of income. Well, you can start sources of income. You can start them all over the world. You may say, well, how? Well, you don't have to know how. You just have to make a decision that you're going to do it. The how will come. Don't let the how trip you, okay? And once you get one going, then you get another one. And it may be in a related field right near where you are. See, I believe you can set up sources of income that are very closely attached to what you're already doing. And then you may go to the other side of the world and set one up. Now, as you get good at this, they're going to start popping up all over the place. You may say, well, I don't know how to do this. Well, of course you don't. Not to start with. I didn't know how to do when I started. I didn't even know how to read very well when I started. I hadn't gone to school. I had two months high school. I had no business experience. But you know, I built a business all over the world. How did I start? I'll tell you exactly how I started. I borrowed $1,000. I bought a used form machine and some buckets and mops. I started in the cleaning business. And I started by cleaning one office, washing the floor twice a month, $15 a time. Then I got another office at $65 a month. Now I'm up to $95. I was only earning $400 a month to start with. Do you know, one day I passed out on the street. I thought the answer was work harder, get another office to clean. But it didn't work that way. And I woke up and there's a big cop looking at me and there's uh, people standing all around me and I see a stretcher and lights flashing. And it was a scary situation. I guess I'd passed out. I was exhausted. I thought the answer was work harder. That is not the answer. Hard work is never the answer. The people you know that work the hardest are probably the ones that are in the least. Now think, really think. I got off by myself. I didn't let them take me to the hospital. I got, and I started to think. And I realized it was like something inside of me said, Bob, you're doing something wrong. And then another little voice said, if you can't clean all of them, don't clean any of them. Do you know over the next five years, I was cleaning offices in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, London, England. 
and the income was just rolling in from all over the place. Now, I'm not telling you to go clean offices. I'm telling you that I stumbled on something. It took me 10 years to find out what I was doing different. I had set up multiple sources of income. Now, I, I wanted to know how I changed. Why did I change? My income went over a million, and I didn't really know what I was doing different. I started to study. It took me 10 years, and I realized I didn't have one source of income. I had many sources of income. Now, as you set these up, You'll be asking, well, are they all the same size? Do you earn the same on all of them? No. Some of them won't even work. Some of them will die on you. There's so many ways of doing it. You could become a network marketer. You could become an online marketer. You could become an affiliate marketer. We have all kinds of affiliate marketers in our company. See, you want to make a decision that you are going to set up multiple sources of income. You don't have to know how. When you make the decision, you will start to attract how you're going to do it. Some of them will grow and some of them will die. But you know something? They all have one thing in common. They all flow into your bank. Some will be big and some will be small. It's absolutely phenomenal how this works. It all flows into your bank. Great idea. Just an absolutely beautiful idea. That's right. That's where it happens. Now, that's an affirmation I've been using for a long, long time. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. Where did I get? I don't know where I got that. I probably got it from maybe Joseph Murphy's books or somebody of that. There's a great book, The Power of the Subconscious. You want to read it. I've got a great book. You can go to my website and get it. Uh, you Were Born Rich, and it's what I learned from 61 to 1984 when I wrote the book. But at any rate, you keep repeating a positive statement. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. You see, when you stop and think about this, there are only three income earning strategies, just three. I don't know which one you're using. You may be using them all. But there are three. I call it one, M1, M2, and M3. Now, we started out by saying only 3% of the people earn 97% of all the money. So the odds of your kids growing up to learn how to earn money is pretty slim. If you don't teach them, they probably won't get it because they're not going to get it in school. School does not teach us how to earn money. There's no place they say, well, that's absurd. You go to work to earn money. No, you don't. That's not a good idea. You think you provide service to earn money. You can earn more money when you're sleeping than you can spend when you're awake once you get good at this. You see... I'm not only good at it, I'm good at teaching it. And so I figured if I put this together and put it out there on YouTube, you all start studying, you'll start thinking, wow. Now, if you're going to teach your children anything, you want to teach them this one because M3 is the only one that really works well, okay? Now, M1 is a good strategy. It's not a good strategy, but it's used by 96% of the population. Now, think about that for a moment. 96 out of every 100 people use this strategy, and it doesn't work. It's got a problem. It's called saturation. This is where people trade their time for money. Now, we all get the same amount of time. We get all there is. So it's what we do with our time that's really going to make the difference. Now, think about this. I mean, really think about this. 96% of the people are trading their time for money. It's a 9 to 5 syndrome. And you see, part of the old conditioning is save some money for your old age. Save for a rainy day. You save for a rainy day, I'll guarantee you you're going to get a rainy day. But what do we do? We take a little bit of what we earn and we squirrel it away for what? For our old age or something. We do that at the expense of a life. We never drive the car we want. We don't live in the house we want. We don't take the vacations we want. Go into a clothes store. Walk into any clothes store. And I'll guarantee you the first thing you're looking at is the price tag. They're not looking for what they want. You know, the last thing you should ask for is what's this cost? Because you've made a decision you're going to get it, so you have to know how, to, how much to pay for it. And don't try and knock them down. Pay what they ask. But do the same thing. Charge what you want, okay? Now, you see, trading time for money, there's a saturation. You run out of time. It's not a good strategy. Now, M2 is an excellent strategy, but it's only used by 3% of the population. You see, 3% of the population are following this strategy. It's where you invest money to earn money. Now, when you invest money to earn money, if you're good at it, you can earn some money. Some people are not good at it. They're working in the M1 
strategy, and so they save a little bit, and they get risky, and they grow, and they invest it. Bad investment, like that, they lose it all. Now they say, well, this isn't any good. I'm not going to do this anymore. Well, if you're really good at it, you can earn money there. But the M3 strategy is the one that you really want to focus on. It's used by 1% of the population. Now it spills over to about three. But 1% of the population earns 96%, 97% of all the money. What do they do that's different? They set up multiple sources of income. They multiply their time by setting up multiple sources of income. Now, if you really want to win in a big way, that's how you're going to do it. It's so basic and so simple. Well, you can learn more about it, but you want to study it. You want to study it. Money. Multiple sources of income. Boom, like that. MSIs. That's what the Proctor Gallagher Institute really focuses on, helping people understand how to set up MSIs. We teach people to train people to set up MSIs. You see, there's no end to what you can do. There's absolutely no end to what you can do, but you've got to decide what you're going to do. You want to take one of these things in your hand and sit down and write out how you want to live. And it doesn't matter what it costs. You write it down, and then you only think of how to do it and you set up multiple sources. Now, let's suppose you have never touched a computer in your life, and you're going to learn how to use the computer, how to work with it. It's gonna take you a while. And the strange thing about computers, when you learn something, it leads you into learning something else, and then you learn something else. It's sort of like an evolution that takes place in your mind as you start working. At least that's the way I found it, and most of the people I know. But when you first start, when I first started, I didn't even know how to turn it on. A guy named Rob taught me, and I'm sure that he, when he started to teach me, he thought, this guy's never going to learn how to use this thing. But he did learn how to use it, all right? Why? Because I made up my mind I was going to learn how to use it. But when you make up your mind that you're going to earn yourself a specific amount of money every year, and you might set that, that magic million. Anybody can learn how to earn a million. I believe I could teach anybody how to do that. There's a lot of people that can teach you how to do that. But you've got to decide you're going to do it. And if you don't decide you're going to do it, the odds of it happening are pretty slim. Now, is it going to happen overnight? No, nothing happens overnight like that. But over a period of time, let's say over six months, you're going to learn how to master this thing. You're going to learn how to set up MSIs. And after you learn how to do it, then you're going to start to learn how to multiply it. I read a story one time by U.S. Anderson. It came in a book told a story about he and a friend of his were in a nightclub, and there was guys spinning plates on the end of bamboo poles. You've probably seen it happen on television. And this guy had 18 plates spinning on the end of bamboo poles. And when the bamboo pole was bending over and just about, and you think the plate's going to say, get that pole, get that pole, you think he goes over and he gets it going again. When they left the club, he says to his friend, wasn't it amazing how well he spun those 18 plates? And his friend says, not was amazing how, not was, what was amazing isn't how well he did it, but the fact that he did it at all. And Anderson said that started him thinking, how do you become an 18-plate spinner? Ah, he said, you learn to play, spin one plate. Learn to set up one MSI, and then two. And maybe you'll become an 18-plate spinner yourself. MSIs. It's about Proctor.